Good morning. Today is Wednesday, April the 1st, 2020. I want to welcome you again to our time of confession and prayer this morning. I'm so thankful that you're here, that you've set aside this time um, to meet with us, to meet with God, um, to lay before God um, those things that are weighing heavily on your heart. Uh, this morning as I came outside to record, uh, I just noticed that we had a, a, a rain last night, which we really needed. Uh, and I was reminded that as the sun is coming up and I see the uh, moisture on the grass and on the plants that uh, God's mercy and God's grace is new and fresh each and every day. And what a blessing that is to uh, all of creation, to us and also uh, to the earth. So uh, to that we say, Amen. Uh, just a quick reminder that we will meet online for worship. This is the final week of our Lenten series and next week is Holy Week. It's hard to imagine we're uh, getting close to Easter. Uh, Easter is right around the corner. So uh, I hope that this has been a time of preparation, uh, a time of reflection for you. Uh, but we will meet for our final series uh, in the um, weekly series empty this evening for worship uh, so I invite you to be there 630 online you can go to Facebook or the church's website to see that so uh, we hope that you can be present there and please do remember uh, whether it be during our time of prayer in the morning or confession or during our worship services whether they be uh, on the weekend or this midweek series that we're ending this week feel free to put uh, your prayer requests in the comment section uh, and our prayer team and um, the pastors uh, and we will be praying for you praying for those who um, the Spirit has put on your heart so please do uh, remember that as we uh, move forward into um, the season of Easter and we move ahead into this into this new day I want to leave you with one thought before we begin something for you to consider throughout the day today I'm going to be laying before you a reading that speaks to um, Jesus Christ meeting with children. And I want you to listen close to that reading, and I want you to consider what it means for us to have a childlike faith. What it means for us to um, come to the world, to come before God with a faith that is like a child. So be thinking about that as we uh, move forward into our time together this morning. We begin our time together in the name of the blessed Holy Trinity, God, Creator, Christ, and Spirit, the one who forgives all sin, the one whose mercy endures forever. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We repent of our sins, known and unknown. We are truly sorry and pray for forgiveness. We firmly intend to amend our lives and to seek help in mending what is broken. We ask for strength to turn from sin and to serve you in newness of life. Please join me now for a word of prayer. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace waters our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new things that you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now allow me to read for you 1st from 2nd Corinthians and then we'll look to the Gospel according to Mark. 2nd Corinthians chapter 2 verses 14 through 17. But thank God he has made us his captives and continues to lead us along in Christ's triumphal procession. 
Now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere, like a sweet perfume. Our lives are a Christ-like fragrance rising up to God. But this fragrance is perceived differently by those who are being saved and by those who are perishing. To those who are perishing, we are a dreadful smell of death and doom. But to those who are being saved, we are a life-giving perfume. And who is adequate for such a task as this? You see, we are not like many hucksters who preach for personal profit, who preach the word of God with sincerity and with Christ's authority, who preach the word of God with sincerity and with Christ's authority, knowing that God is watching us. We speak with God's authority. And now, a reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, starting at verse 13. One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. He said to them, Let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on their heads and blessed them. Word of God, word of life. Cling to this promise. The word of forgiveness that I speak to you comes from God. Beloved, by water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all of your sins. Almighty God, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now join me in prayer. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. God of grace and mercy, we thank you for this day, this new day that you have given us, this gift. We ask that you walk with us, help us to feel your presence and your love. God of all creation, we lift to you those who are on our hearts now. We know that you are a God who loves his children and who hears our prayers. Lord, this morning we lift to you Joseph. Joseph is in the midst of cancer treatment. We pray that through this, Joseph would find healing. And we know that Joseph is also traveling each day back and forth to Tampa, so we ask for travel mercies for Joseph. And in that time in the, in the vehicle, going from one place to the next, in that quiet time, fill that space in Joseph's head and heart with your voice, the voice of the Spirit, calming and giving confidence. Lord, we also pray with Peter, who is in hospital. Hospital is a difficult place to be, especially now with the virus that we're faced with. 
So we ask for your hand of protection over Peter in this time, that there would be healing, that medical professionals would be a hand and a voice of Christ to Peter, to comfort. And Lord, we also pray with Raquel, who was recently diagnosed with cancer. Lord, we know that this is the beginning of a new journey for Raquel. And we know that through that time, there will be questions, there will be doubt, there will be fear. So Lord, in the way that we can, help us to minister to Raquel, because we know that the Spirit will be with her as she travels on this journey. And Lord, we ask for healing. We ask for hope. We ask for your help. Give the doctors who will be treating Raquel wisdom and guidance in the work that they do as they share their gifts that come from you to help minister to Raquel in a medical way. So these are the prayers that we have that we lift before you. And Lord, we take a moment of silence to lift to you the prayers that are on our hearts. God, we thank you for loving us the way that only you could. Help us to have childlike faith, to lean into the world and to lean into your arms. We ask all of this in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Friends, until I see you again, peace be with you. Amen.